In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to calculate how much your 403B plan is costing you each and every year. So this video, this is for my K through 12 public school district employees. That can mean teachers, custodians, administrators. And the reason I'm focusing on this is because the 403B market, it's very confusing. There's so many different options where it's just hard to make sense of it all. And most teachers, they actually don't think that they pay anything in these 403Bs when it's really the exact opposite. These are some of the most expensive retirement plans that exist out there. And now if you don't have a 403B, this video will actually help you as well, because I'm gonna show you exactly the impact that fees have on your overall retirement accounts as you're saving. So let's go ahead and get to it. Thanks. All right, so let's take a closer look at the 403B plan. So now depending on the investment provider you choose to sign up with, there are typically three types of products that your money's gonna be invested in. So the first one is a variable annuity, and that is typically sold through an insurance company. So for example, if you sign up with AXA or with Valic or with ING or with MetLife or Bright House, you're going to have your money going into a variable annuity. So now variable annuity is by far the most popular in the school districts. And you know, 403Bs, another term that people use for them are TSAs. And that stands for a tax sheltered annuity because they're mostly annuity products that are offered in the 403B. So if you have an insurance company with a variable annuity with your 403B plan, then these are the typical fees that you'll see inside your 403B. The first one is called an M&E fee. And the typical range is like between 1% to 1.5%. But I usually find one and a quarter percent is gonna be the fee for that. And for that, it's called the mortality and expense fee. The next type of expense with a variable annuity is gonna be the actual expense ratio of the funds that you're invested. So if your investment advisor sits down and you guys choose five or six funds, each fund has its own expense ratio for the company to manage that fund. Some of them can range, you know, they could be as low as half a percent all the way up to one and a half percent inside your variable annuity. And the other thing that's tough is that these funds, they're usually proprietary. They're usually made for that annuity. So it's not even like you could easily look up the ticker symbol and find out how much the expense ratio is on that fund. It's very hard to figure out. You actually have to either ask your advisor to break it down for you or get a copy of the prospectus and see what it is. But now if you add up the M&E fee plus the fund expenses, you'll come to the total percentage that that account is costing you each and every year. And it's a moving target because you might have more in one fund compared to another fund. So it's not that easy to calculate. And they don't put this stuff on your statement. So it's not like on your statement you see, oh, this is how much I paid in you know management costs and fees over the last quarter, over the last year. It is nowhere to be found. So it makes people assume that they're not paying anything. But this couldn't be further from the truth. All right, so now the second option are the mutual funds. So if you have an account directly with Invesco, which was Oppenheimer, then to make it a little more confusing, there are different types of share classes that you can own. It's specific to what you're invested in, so you have to do a little research and a little digging to figure it out. But I'm just using here 1.85%, just what I found to be somewhere, you know, in the ballpark. And again, obviously, I'm making a lot of assumptions here going through these different numbers. All right, and now the third product that we're discussing is a managed account. So now with a managed account, this might be at a company like Aspire or Security Benefit. And you have an advisor that is advising you and that is managing an account for you. So they put a portfolio together and the advisor might charge you a fee. A typical fee would be like 1%. Plus you have the expense ratio of any funds that the advisor is using. But hopefully they would be using much lower cost funds. So let's say on average, it's a quarter of a percent for the funds that they're using. They should have access to like Vanguard funds or Fidelity funds or Schwab funds, funds that are gonna be lower cost. So for a managed account, a typical all-in expense ratio or fee to you might be around one and a quarter percent. So if we look at the three different options here, the annuities, an average fee could be, you know, around two and a quarter percent. It could be lower, it could be higher. With mutual funds, 1.85%. That's going to be if you're using C shares, right? Again, I'm just making assumptions here, but that's going to be in the ballpark. And then with a managed account, one and a quarter percent, that's going to be in the ballpark of what you call what you'll pay for a managed account. All right. So I know that was a lot, but we kind of broke down the three different types of products and what you could expect as far as the fees go. So now how do we turn this into actually figuring out how much it costs you each and every year in your 403B plan? So here's a few examples. 
So if you have $300,000 in your 403B plan, and let's say you're invested in the variable annuity, that variable annuity has two and a quarter percent of expense ratio or fees that you're paying in that account, that would come out to $6,750 per year for your account. Now again, this doesn't show anywhere. You have no idea that the money's coming out. It's just being deducted out of the investment options that you have on a daily basis. It's slowly bringing down the performance of your funds throughout the year. So for the mutual fund example, $300,000 with a 1.85% expense ratio, that would be costing you $5,550 per year. Again, on this, you wouldn't actually see it. It's just slowly reducing the value of the funds that you're invested in. And then the third option, the managed account example, 300,000 with a 1.25% all-in cost, that would be $3,750 per year. Now, typically on the managed account, they show the fees on your statement. You see it on there. So for example, if the advisor is charging you 1%, you'll see the deduction out of your account as a line item on your statement showing the fee coming out. This is really the only one where you see the actual fee coming out. Even though chances are it is the lowest cost option out of the three, people usually freak out when they see it because like, wow, look at how much I'm paying in here. For my annuity, there's no fees, but that is absolutely not the case. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So the next thing that I want to walk you through is what difference does it make? How does this actually impact me throughout my career teaching or working in the school district? So let's look at an example. Let's say that we have a 25 year old teacher that is just starting out. And now this teacher, they decide that they're going to put in $300 per paycheck into their 403B plan. And let's just assume that they get paid, you know, bi-weekly 26 times a year. So there'll be $7,800 going in to their 403B plan. And another assumption that I'm going to make here is that the market, the growth of the stock market during this time, or the growth of the portfolio that we're using in this example was 8% average over this 35 year period. You'd have to be investing for growth to get an 8% return over a 35 year period, which you should be doing if you have a long time horizon like this. So now if this teacher chooses to invest in an insurance company 403B plan with a variable annuity, then the average cost again at two and a quarter percent per year at the end of 35 years, they would have 877,000 bucks in that 403B account. If the teacher decides to invest in a mutual fund company, if they decide to invest with Invesco, for example, and they're in C shares throughout their entire career, then at the end of the 35 years, they would have $961,936. Let's just call it $962,000 in their 403B. And then third, if we look at what the teacher that chooses to invest in a managed account would have at the end of 35 years, they would have $1,107,000 at the end. So now the only variable here is the cost, is the expenses involved in this 403B plan. So if we look at the difference between the top choice, the variable annuity, and the bottom choice, the managed account, it's only a 1% difference in cost. Right, two and a quarter percent for the variable annuity compared to one and a quarter percent for the managed account. That one percent over the course of their career, that's a difference of two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. That is a tremendous difference. And we're making the assumption here, like we're stopping at age 60. What if this teacher left the money in the 403B for another 30 years after they retire? Think about how big the difference would be at that point. It makes a tremendous difference. Hopefully, you realize that. It's a big deal. That 1% difference, it's a big deal. All right, so here are two questions that you need to do a little research on. So the first question would be, does your school district offer a low cost self-directed option that you could enroll in yourself? Something like Vanguard or Aspire or Security Benefit or Fidelity, something where you could do it on your own and choose low cost index funds that would bring down the cost dramatically of your 403B. So now again, with self-directed, that means that you're on your own, that you're setting everything up by yourself, choosing your own investment options. But if you're comfortable doing that, then this could be a great option for you where you could reduce the cost of your 403B tremendously throughout the years. And now the second question that you need to ask your district is, do you have a 457 plan that's available to you? So now it's just a different type of retirement plan that is offered in many school districts. 
And the big advantage with the 457 plans is that, they, at least in New York State, that it is, it's also called the deferred comp plan, but it's run by New York State. New York State is the investment provider, and it's usually very low cost, and they have very good investment options available to you. So it might be better to just forego the 403B and only invest in the 457 plan. Now, there are some differences between the 457 and the 403B that I'm not going to get into in this video, but it's worth doing a little bit of research and seeing. And the best part is, if you do have a 457 available, you can actually contribute to both and you could max out both of them. So that means that you could save double for retirement what somebody in the 401k space might be able to do. So 457 plans, it's definitely something worth looking into to see if your district offers it. So now if we go back to our example of the 25 year old teacher who contributes for 35 years and we throw in this fourth option where if you have a 457 plan or if you have a low cost self-directed option in your 403b plan and this is also what it would look like for you 401k people out there as well let's just make the assumption that the all-in cost is only a quarter of one percent or 25 basis points we call it then your balance in your 403B or 457, 35 years from now would be 1.4 million. So look at that tremendous difference that it makes. 1.4 million compared to if you choose a variable annuity where the expenses are two and a quarter, that you have $877,000. That is a tremendous difference at retirement. So it's worth doing a little bit of research figuring out what the best plan is available for you so that you could save basically hundreds of thousands of dollars for your retirement. This is some important stuff. Make sure to share this with any teachers that you know. They need to know this stuff. All right, as I'm wrapping up here, let me just uh, make some disclosures and point out some things to consider. First one is I made a ton of assumptions in this video. All right, I'm speaking of from experience here and you need to do your own research. So I'm not giving anybody direct advice. I don't know you, I don't know your situation. I'm just trying to educate you on this stuff, but you need to take it from here. You need to reach out, call your financial advisor, call me and I will help you out trying to figure out how much you're paying in these 403B plans. But I don't know anything about you speaking to you through a YouTube video. So you need to take the ball from here and run with it and start doing a little research on it. All right. So the assumptions that I'm making here, they could, the cost, they could be higher or lower. You know, the market growth, I'm using an 8% rate of return in these numbers in this video. If you invest conservatively, there's no way you could get 8%. And 8%, who knows what could happen in the future. The markets might be much less than that. The returns could be much less than that over the next 35 years. I don't know. I'm just using some typical averages when trying to calculate out over the next 35 years. But again, it could be better. It could be much worse. All right. You could lose money. The third thing is, you know, I talk about self-directed options being much lower costs. And there's a reason for that is because there's no financial advisor involved. So if you have no idea about this stuff and you don't know what you're doing, Obviously, I believe that a financial advisor brings a ton of value. Even if you are good with this stuff, I still believe that a qualified, certified financial planner who's acting as a fiduciary brings a ton of value to your life. But you should be able to make that determination. You should be able to see, you know, is this person providing value to me in order for me to go with one of the options that comes with a financial advisor? And then the fourth thing to consider is that a majority of teachers are in that highest cost option, the variable annuity, because that's really what it's always been. That's really been, it's made up most of the options that are available. Plus you have representatives from those companies who are in the schools all the time. They're there educating, trying to help teachers because they get paid on that stuff. That's how they make their money. So they're out there selling these 403B annuity products where the very low cost products, like when Vanguard was in the school districts, there are no representatives from Vanguard walking around the school districts. It's just not the way that it works. So you do have to do a little bit of research to try to figure out what is best for you. All right, so that's it for this one. Please make sure to share this video with every teacher that you know. Teachers need to know this stuff. It is very important. And not just teachers, custodians, administrators. This applies to all of them. This is stuff that they need to know to be able to 
prepare for their retirement. And if you need my help, if you're part of the New York State teacher retirement system, please reach out to me. I will help you figure out how much you're paying in your 403B plan and look at your district and see what options might be available to you. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel if you've not done so already. Hit that like button that helps with the YouTube algorithms as far as this video getting out there to reach more people. And I will see you all again in my next video. Thanks a lot.